Could the Rolex Skydweller be the best modern Rolex? Hi everyone and welcome to Saluso. And before we get started, I want to give a quick thank you to RX8 Golden Shield in Sydney, Australia for lending in the watch we're going to be discussing and that is the Rolex Skydweller in steel. And my question is that can the Rolex Skydweller really be the best modern Rolex? Not the best Rolex ever, That's they have too much history to sort of uh, define that in one video, but the best modern Rolex, the best one currently on sale today. In my view it is and I've got four reasons for that. I think that to be in contention for being the best modern offering from a brand, you still need to reflect that brand's values. And that starts with Rolex in terms of design of being about evolution and not revolution. And while the Skydweller is a new model, you look at it right away and you know it's a Rolex. And it's that design continuity that Rolex has across its entire range. If you look at something like the modern Submariner, it's definitely changed a lot, you might say, since the original, but if you put a 16610LN next to a Submariner from the 50s or 60s, you'll tell right away, oh, those are both Submariners, those are both Rolexes. Even someone who doesn't know about watches will be able to look at them and see those are from the same brand. And it's the same case with the Skydweller. You put it next to a Datejust, you'd think, oh, that's just a bigger version of the Datejust. And it carries a lot of those traits that are so quintessentially Rolex. The fluted bezel, the oyster bracelet, the Cyclops, the script of a telenovela written all across its dial. You look at it right away and you know it's a Rolex. And you even know that it's one from their sort of crossover dress sports collection by seeing that fluted bezel, for example, which we're so used to seeing on things like the Datejust and the Day Day. The second of Rolex's core values that I think this really reflects is the notion of ergonomics. One of the hidden wonders, I think, of what makes Rolex so good in general is the fact that they put so much effort into the wearability, both from a comfort standpoint and from a sizing standpoint. From a comfort standpoint, well, there's a reason why the Oyster bracelet is one of the most popular bracelets out there. It's extremely comfortable. It's well built, but with enough channels to air out your wrist. It's got the easy link, which allows you to size it on the go. I think it's about the size of maybe a link or a half link. Those sorts of things help make it a lot more comfortable versus other bracelets. And then when it comes to sizing, yes, this is a 42 millimeter Rolex, but at a glance, you don't really notice that. How they've achieved that is through their case design. It's a similar sort of trick to what they've done with the Submariner, where they've given it more presence despite being only a 40 millimeter watch, so people with smaller wrists can wear them. They did kind of the opposite with the Skydweller. They've given it the case from the Date Just and the Day Date in Daytona. However, it's in a 42 millimeter. So it's a larger size, but you can still wear it with a relatively smaller wrist because it doesn't have as chunky a look. And despite all the complications that it has, it's still only 14.1 millimeters thick. This is a watch with an annual calendar, a GMT, and it's automatic and 100 meter water resistance and still only 14 millimeters thick. And then lastly, when it comes to ergonomics and usability, that ring command bezel is extremely intuitive. This was the second Skydweller I spent some time with. The first one was the Rose Gold Skydweller. And despite there being a fair bit amount of time between when I tried both of them, I didn't need to sort of relearn how to use a Skydweller. I remembered it right away. And when I had my first experience with a Skydweller, the ring command was extremely intuitive. It's really easy to figure out what does what without having to look at instructional videos on how to use it. And then that brings us to the third core value of Rolex that I think that the Skydweller embodies, and that is innovation, specifically reinvention of innovation. What I mean by that is that Rolex doesn't usually actually invent things from scratch. They just make existing things better and more user friendly. I often liken them to Apple in that sense. When they came out with the iPod, by no means was that the first MP3 player. But what Apple did is they reinvented something that already existed and made it more user friendly, more intuitive. And that's exactly what Rolex has done. The first annual calendar was released in 1996 by Patek Philippe. The first GMT was released back in the 50s admittedly by Rolex themselves. But what they've done is they've reinvented both of those. The Caliber 9001 only needs four extra gears to be able to operate as an annual calendar. For reference, it took Patek Philippe about a century to change from the perpetual calendar to inventing the annual calendar. Rolex took about 20 years and four gears. So definitely they've invented something new and this is probably the most innovative Rolex caliber, arguably perhaps only losing out to the one in the Yachtmaster 2. 
And this is the most recent example of that sort of innovation. When you look at Rolex calibers right now, they're ones that have been around for 20 years. Barring the one in the Skydweller and the Yachtmaster 2, its most modern one was released in the year 2000 and that was the 4130. The 3235, that's still essentially just matching the stats of the 4130 minus a chronograph. So all in all, what I'm trying to say here is that this is the most recent example and one of the best examples of Rolex actually innovating instead of just improving upon a base that it already had. They may not have invented the ring command for the Skydweller, but they definitely improved of it. And this represents a very small blip of new innovation, new models that Rolex has had over the last few years because they came out with the Yacht Master, then a few years later the Skydweller, and that's it. The rest of their models have been around since the 50s and 60s when you consider things like the Daytona, the Submariner, and the GMT. They're all just evolutions. And then the last brand value that I think that this particular model reflects really well is that Rolexes have often been billed as tool watches, watches made for specific professions. The Skydweller is one of the few examples I think that actually might be used for the designated profession. It's called the Skydweller. It's not a pilot's watch. If you look at a lot of their marketing material for it, they've often shown it, you know, next to like an airplane window. It's probably targeting someone like a business traveler. And this could actually be extremely useful for a business travel. It's got that day, day, day just look, so it can still pass off as a formal watch and you can still put it on a strap as well if you need to dress it up. It's not too thick, so it means it's gonna be easy to slip under a cuff. It has the GMT, most business travelers need to know two time zones, and the annual calendar. It's something that they only need to reset once a year, and it means they always have the date and the month on hand right away for if they're dating emails, if they're referring back to something. If they need that reference, it's there, it's easy to read. It's something that a sky dweller, a business traveler, would probably actually use. And that's not something that you can say of a lot of modern steel sports watches. How many professional divers are going down with a Submariner? How many racers have a Daytona on their wrist? How many pilots are really in the market for a steel Pepsi GMT? Not many. I'd be willing to bet that this is probably the most relevant tool watch for the profession that it's chosen to target. And that I think is something that Rolex models haven't done for a long time. So I really applaud Rolex for finding a niche where it can still actually be relevant. And then the last reason why I think this is the best modern Rolex is that it carries a trait that modern steel sports Rolexes do, and it's a requirement almost, not something I particularly like, but it's a trait that they kind of have to to get that seal of approval, and that is that it sells above retail on the gray market. This is almost a rite of passage that Rolex needs to do to be taken seriously. If you look, no one's really talking about Cellini's, for example, because they sell for under retail. And that's a disappointment in itself, but I'll make another video about the Cellini to highlight how much I like that watch and why I think it deserves more attention. But getting back to the Skydweller, interestingly, it initially wasn't a sales hit. There wasn't a lot of demand for it until the steel one came out. And even then, its resale price isn't in the crazy stratospheric markups like you have the Daytona, which sells for double list in some cases. For reference, this sells new for $14,800 in steel and with a white gold bezel. And on the pre-owned market, depending on which dial you get, you'll be spending anywhere from about $16,000 up to an upper cap of $27,000. Now that upper cap I think is ridiculous and is probably people just trying to see if they can get someone interested. But even then, the Daytona plays up there. And between these two, this is a much more technically advanced watch with very useful complications at that. So for those reasons, I think the Skydweller definitely is the best modern Rolex. It's one of the newest. It still matches all the things that make Rolexes great in general. And it still carries the trait that modern Rolexes have to have in that it sells over list. But let me know in the comments below what you think of the Steel Skydweller. Which model do you think is the best modern Rolex and why? I'd love to know your opinions in the comments below. And of course, a big thanks to RX8 Golden Shield for lending in the Sky Dweller that I've featured throughout this video. Make sure you check their links in the description below as well if you're looking for protection for your Rolex. And of course, if you want to see more pictures of this Sky Dweller and tons of other watches, follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And if you want to keep seeing new watch videos every week, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as well. And last but not least, thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.